File 193 and repass said bill in accordance with the report of the committee so adopted. Senate file number one, Senate file number 193, a bill for an act relating to health occupations. Senate file 193 is here with return to the Senate. Patrick D. Murphy, Chief Clerk. There's Mr. no action required on that message. The Secretary will read the next message. Mr. President, I have the honor to announce the House has adopted the recommendation report of the Conference Committee on Senate File Number 958 and repass said bill in accordance with the report of the Committee. So adopted. Senate File Number 958, a bill for an act relating to state government. Senate File Number 958 is here with return to the Senate. Patrick D. Murphy, Chief Clerk, House of Representatives. There's no action required on that message. <clears throat> Next, we'll move to <coughs> remaining under motions and resolutions. Uh, we'll move to the eighth order of business, introduction and first reading of Senate files. Listed in the addendum of the introduction calendar are Senate file numbers 2567 to 2572. These Senate files are given their first reading and referred as indicated. Uh, remaining under motions and resolutions, we have some author's motions to be read by the Secretary. Senator Matthews moves that the names of Senator Housley, Dornick, Thomasoni and Limmer be added as co-authors to Senate file number 952. Senator Ingebrigtsen moves that the name of Senator Bigham be added as co-author to Senate file number 2560. We'll take these authors' motions as one motion. All those in favor, say aye. aye. Opposed, say no. Motion prevails. <laughs> Remaining under motions and resolutions, Senator Gazelka. Mr. President, pursuant to Rule 26, I designate the following bills to be made for special orders for, Im for immediate consideration. I believe there's two of them on your desk. Uh, members, we already did the first one on the list, so the next one up for consideration is number eight on general orders, House File 809, Senator Clausen. Thank you, Mr. President. House File 809 is a proposal to clarify Minnesota Statute 201, Section 609.527, Subdivision 3, which relates to identity uh, theft provisions. If you look at that area in statute, Subdivision 5 contains two unrelated clauses. Clause 5 begins addressing identity theft but also references offenses relating to the possession or distribution of pornographic material. So what we have is one notation in statute contains two unrelated provisions. And this results in a misrepresentation of information when a background check is conducted, listing the person's offense as identity theft or child pornography. This uh, particular proposal really came to me from a constituent. This was a young lady that uh, acknowledged that she had made some poor decisions in her life. She had been uh, sentenced and convicted to five years at the Minnesota Correctional Facility in Shakopee. And she was released in July 2019 and was set out to make some changes in her life. The first task that she had to look forward to was finding a job. And as she went from finding a job, an interview to interview, uh, no luck, and these were entry-level positions that she was applying for. And finally, at one point, a prospective employer shared with her, this is your background check. And she was dumbfounded to find her offenses listed as identity theft, eight or more direct victims, combined loss greater than $35,000, or child pornography. So my constituent did share their story with the Judiciary Committee. Uh, it was very tear-jerking in some regards because this is the person that found herself out of prison, homeless, and unable to find a job. So really what we're doing by passing House File 809 is that we're separating those two provisions and the identity theft provision, so this wouldn't be uh, something that would occur to anyone else in the in the future and with that mr. President I'd be open to any questions discussion on house file 809 the secretary will give the bill its third reading house file number 809 a bill for an act relating to public safety making technical change to identity theft crime third reading any final discussion on the bill Members, we're on final passage of House File 809. See no further discussion. The Secretary will take the roll.
All members in alternate locations, please come to the chamber to vote. I'll call on Senator French to report the votes of the members voting under Rule 40.7. Senator French. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Champion votes aye. Champion votes aye. Senator French. Senator Eaton votes aye. Eaton votes aye. Senator French. Senator Eakin votes aye. Eakin votes aye. Senator French. Senator Isaacson votes aye. Isaacson votes aye. Senator French. Senator Latz votes aye. Latz votes aye. Senator French. Senator Newton votes aye. Newton votes aye. Senator French. Senator Torres Ray votes aye. Torres Ray votes aye. Senator French. Senator Dedzik votes aye. Dedzik votes aye. Senator French. Senator Port votes aye. Port votes aye. Senator French. And Senator Murphy votes aye. Murphy votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Coleman votes no. Uh, correction. Senator Coleman votes aye. Coleman votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Goggin votes aye. Goggin votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Newman votes aye. Newman votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Senjum votes aye. Senjum votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Ingerbritson votes aye. Ingerbritson votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Limmer votes aye. Limmer votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Housley votes aye. Housley votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Westrom votes aye. Westrom votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Osmick votes aye. Osmick votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator French. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Champion votes aye. Champion votes aye. Senator Friends. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Marty votes aye. Marty votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator Senator McEwen votes aye. McEwen votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator Kunish votes aye. Kunish votes aye. Senator Friends. And Senator Johnson Stewart votes aye. Johnson Stewart votes aye. All members having voted who have the desire to vote, the Secretary will close the roll. There being 67 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and it's titled agreed to. Remaining under motions and resolutions will revert to the third order of business, messages from the House. The Secretary will read the message. 
Mr. President, I have the honor to announce that the House has adopted the recommendation and report of the Conference Committee in House File Number 2128 and repass said bill in accordance with the report of the committee so adopted, Senate House File Number 2128, a bill for an act relating to state government. House File Number 2128 is herewith transmitted to the Senate. Patrick D. Murphy, Chief Clerk, House of Representatives. Senator Benson. Mr. President, I move that the foregoing recommendations and conference committee report on House File 2128 be now adopted and the bill be repassed as amended by the conference committee. To that motion, Senator Benson. Um, Mr. President, when the bill left the floor, it was intended to be the Health and Human Services Omnibus Budget Bill. As time began to wind down, Chair Liebling and I agreed that we would work on same and similar. We joined with our uh, co-chairs, Representative Schultz, and Senator Abler to bring the bill before you today. So it is significantly different than the bill that came to the floor, but it was um, those articles that, as I said, were same and similar or could be agreed upon. Uh, discussion on the Benson motion. Senator Abler. Well, thank you, Mr. President. I'll just make my comments now and move along here. So, you know, people often say, what's not in the bill? So this is the, the original Senate bill, and this is the original House bill. Oh, I can't lift that up? Okay. I'll just read this to you then, Madam Mr. President. Anyway, the, uh, the, the uh, current bill is only half the size, and so there's a lot to be proud of in it. And, you know, as I said before, uh, you know, there's a lot of agreement around this place. And I want to thank, uh, I can't turn my head, Senator Housie for uh, providing half of the material of this bill in her um, mental health uh, standards. And, you know, in the depths of how government works, it's a lot of details. And if I did read it to you, you would have a hard time paying attention. But it's really important to the people who it matters for. And uh, I really want to commend the process we've had so far with the other body and the leaders on this side. And it's uh, successful. And I think this product, which I guess I can't hold up because it's considered a prop. Okay. Um, it's something to be proud of, so please vote yes. Thank you. Further discussion on the Benson motion? Senator Benson. Um, Mr. President, I was reminded that I'm supposed to explain what's in the bill. Um, <laughs> I was going to do that after we adopted the conference committee report. Uh, but, Mr. President, some significant things that we did retain from the bill as it left the floor. Um, significant child support provisions that had been worked on by Senator Kiffmeyer. We brought to the floor provisions that had not been heard on the floor related to medical cannabis. Senator Corrin did significant work in our committee, and it was voted out of the committee, but it was not brought to the floor. It includes the addition of um, the uh, vegetation of cannabis, the leaf and bud, um, as well as reforms such as easier access for people with disabilities, uh, grinding of the root ball. Uh, we hope that the reforms that were made to the medical cannabis program will reduce the price point and make it more accessible. There are concerns about security as it relates to allowing um, the leaf and bud for medical cannabis. The controls that were in place for oil, the CBD oils and the refined oils remain in place for the vegetation as well. It is not our goal to um, make this a path to legalization. It's a goal to make this available to people who have medical need and cannot afford it. So we hope that we have reached the right balance. Um, Senator Coran, I want to thank you for the significant work that you did there. Um, we did make changes, um, some really basic changes. We went through COVID. When we do hospital rebasing, now they can use two years instead of one year so that we don't have this strange blip in hospital rates, FQHC rates, and rural health clinics. That was a governor's proposal. We expanded fraud investigation to include tribal agencies, again, a governor's proposal. Um, made changes to the opioid prescribing program by adding two consumer members. That was a recommendation from the governor as well. We required the commissioner to develop an MA reimbursable recuperative care service. That was a Senator Klein provision that he brought on the floor. For the health department, um, we allow reference drug 
data that's made available from other states to be used in our drug prescription transparency program. We delayed the implementation date because, because due to COVID, they just haven't been able to get all the information they were supposed to get. Um, a licensed dent dentist is added to the Rural Health Advisory Committee, Senator Dreheim. Senator Dietzik, your provision removing race from marriage licenses uh, was adopted as well. We modified the individuals who could request a birth certificate, Senator Duckworth provision. We amended the requirements for outdoor space. If you're an existing um, housing with services establishment, you might not have an outdoor space that meets the new licensing requirements. So we created a provision so that they could continue to operate as housing with services. Uh, we moved WIC food benefits from two times per month to three times per month. We didn't increase the benefit, we just changed the accessibility. Um, and Senator Dibble, I see you just left your seat. We did um, have to pass over some of your reforms. The House had some concerns, but we're going to go back and get those in the next round. Uh, with regard to prescription drug prices, we did implement the gag rule. Um, or we, I'm sorry, revoked the ability to have a gag rule in place. We modified the drug repository program. Uh, for health insurance, we uh, required that if you submit a clean application for provider credentialing, that within three days, uh, three business days, the health plan company must inform of the application's deficiencies or approve the clean application or make a determination within 45 days. Um, we did not do the big telehealth bill. It does cost money and this bill is focused on very small changes, um, but good policy. We did pick up one telehealth requirement that removes the face-to-face -face requirement uh, for MFIP caregivers of a minor child. We. Uh, allowed fe federally recognized tribal nations to receive food shelf grants and clarified access of tribal nations to the consolidated MFIT fund, made changes to North Star care for children provisions and updated child protection provisions, including Families First Preventive Services, um, aligned the uh, families First Protective Services to state foster care. Uh, we clarified QRTP requirements for juvenile court processes and aligned the Children's Justice Initiative with federal definitions of sex traffic youth. We allowed uh, a delay in face-to-face -face contact and child protection cases if the child is in a place where they cannot be harmed um, and it's deemed best interest of the child. Again, we picked up Senator Kiffmeyer provisions related to child support, uh, parent education programs. We directed the commissioner to establish a certification process for MA reimbursement for certified community behavioral health clinics. Uh, we permitted the Department of Human Services to operate an excellence in mental health demonstration project. Senator Abler uh, was a champion, as always, of disability care. Um, so we allowed that if someone who is in HCBS uh, need to go, needs to go in other treatment, they can have their seat retained for 121 days without having to reapply. We also made it clear that they don't have to retake a Min Choices assessment. Um, let me see, other significant provisions. As Senator Abler mentioned, the Mental Health Uniform Service Standards, Senator Housley has worked on this for quite a long time. It's nice to get this across the finish line. Senator Housley also has a crisis services provision that unifies the standards for adult and children's crisis services, provides for uniform eligibility and provider standards for youth and children's services. Um, that is the very bread and butter sort of policy that we left the floor with, some additional that we came back with. I hope we can adopt this committee report and send this bill in a very bipartisan way to the governor. Further discussion on the adoption of the committee report. Senator Wicklund. 
Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to rise and, and express my support for the conference committee report. I'm really glad that a lot of the um, same and similar provisions, the policy provisions that were brought in um, are taken care of now, and so we, they won't have to be dealt with in the special session. And I also wanted to say I'd, I'm very um, happy to see that the uh, provisions to strengthen the medical cannabis program are, are in this uh, conference committee report. Um, I think that's really important, and, and I was very supportive of hearing the bill um, in your committee um, this session, and so I'm really glad that those are brought into this conference committee report. And there's a lot of work left to do, um, a lot of things that aren't um, brought forward that have to be discussed yet, um, and look forward to seeing uh, what positive things we can bring forward in special session. So thank you. Further discussion on the Benson motion, Senator Rood. Mr. President, uh, I want to thank Senator Benson and all the members of the committee for this bill. And I'd like to also thank Senator Benson for sitting down with me and explaining the uh, medical marijuana provision. Um, I think there is a lot of misinformation about what this provision does and what it is. And Senator Benson sat down with me to discuss really what it does and how very important it is going forward that we do this for, um, for those that need the medical marijuana. And I, I, I think it's an important provision and the fact that she uh, sat down and really explained what it does and doesn't do is very important to this bill. So thank you, Mr. President. Senator Benson renews her motion to adopt the conference committee report on House File 2128. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed say no. no. Motion prevails. The secretary will give the bill its third reading. What are we on? House file number 2128, a bill for an act relating to state government. Third reading. Final discussion on the bill. Senator Benson. Thank you, Mr. President, members, Senator Wickland, and members of the conference committee and all of our staff. We know, having received our target today, that we have miles to go before we deliver a full health and human services budget, but I think the content and the approach of this bill bodes well for what we'll deliver for Minnesotans in the weeks to come. So thank you, members. I hope we've earned your support. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, we're on final passage of the conference committee report for House File 2128. See no further discussion. The secretary will take the roll. All members in alternate locations, please come to the chamber to vote. Call on Senator Jasinski to report the votes of the members voting under Rule 40.7. Senator Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Coleman votes aye. Coleman votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Goggin votes aye. Goggin votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Newman votes aye. Newman votes aye. Senator Jasinski. 
Senator Housley votes aye. Housley votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Westrom votes aye. Westrom votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Gazelka votes aye. Gazelka votes aye. <laughs> Members, just a reminder, we are under a roll call vote. Please take your conversations outside the chamber. <laughs> Senator Frentz. Mr. President, Senator Champion votes aye. Champion votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Eaton votes aye. Eaton votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Eakin votes aye. Eakin votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Isaacson votes aye. Isaacson votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Latz votes aye. Latz votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Newton votes aye. Newton votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Torres Ray votes aye. Torres Ray votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Johnson Stewart votes aye. Johnson Stewart votes aye. Senator Frentz. And Senator McEwen votes aye. McEwen votes aye. <laughs> Senator Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Ingebrigtsen votes aye. Ingebrigtsen votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Osmick votes aye. Osmick votes aye. Senator Frentz. Mr. President, Senator Murphy votes aye. Murphy votes aye. All members having voted who have the desire to vote, the secretary will close the roll. There being 66 ayes and one nay, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. Remaining under motions and resolutions will continue under the third order of business messages from the House. The Secretary will read the message. Mr. President, I have the honor to announce that the House has adopted the recommendation and report of the Conference Committee in House File Number 1952 and repassed said bill in accordance with the report of the committee so adopted. House File Number 1952, a bill for an act relating to operation of state government. House File Number 1952 is herewith transmitted to the Senate. Patrick D. Murphy, Chief Clerk, House of Representatives. Senator Kiffmeyer. Thank you, Mr. President and members. Uh, I move that the foregoing recommendations of the Conference Committee report on House File 1952 be now adopted and that the bill re repassed as amended by the Conference Committee. To that motion, Senator Kiffmeyer. Thank you very much, Mr. President and members. Mr. President. Uh, Senator Bach, for what reason do you rise? Uh, Mr. President, uh, I rise to a question of personal privilege. Uh, please state your qu question of personal privilege. Members, again today, I saw the decorum of the Senate badly violated. It's happened over and over and over during this session. And, and I realize there, everybody's under a lot of stress with the pandemic. But the decorum of this institution, this body, matters. You know, the public watches all of us. We're probably on television right now. And I can tell you, they hold us in a different place. They hold this state senate in a different place than the body across the street. They have done that because our predecessors here on this floor have earned that respect from the public. And this year, we've let that slip a great deal. And it's troubled me a lot, and I was reminded again earlier today. You know, we all paid our 100 bucks, and we won an election, and we came here. But that does not give us the right to violate the rules, to violate Masons, to undermine the customs and the traditions of this body. And it happened in a big way uh, earlier this month that troubled me a lot. The day that a senator from St. Paul got up on the floor and tried to move a bill out of committee directly onto general orders. And Mr. President, you announced that it would take 41 votes under the rules uh, to do that. Well, after that vote failed, a member on this floor decided to go to Twitter and, and posted the following. In the Minnesota Senate today, uh, Senator from St. Paul motioned to bring the Equal Rights Amendment to the floor. The result, lost by one vote. The Minnesota Senate won't even consider. The newly independent Senator 
once an equal rights supporter, was the deciding vote. Remember, Senator Thomas Oney voted for the motion. So I know who that member was talking about. And I'll tell you something about that post. It was a blatant lie. Mr. Chairman, you made it very clear that day that it took 41 votes to pull that bill out of committee. It received 33, it, or 32, excuse me. It would have taken eight or nine more votes to get that bill out of committee. And for somebody to post on public social media a blatant lie, that is not the decorum, the customs of this institution. It is clearly against Masons. It's clearly against the Senate rules. Where in the Senate rules under standards of ethical conduct, it says, members shall adhere to the highest standard of ethical, ethical conduct embodied in the Constitution, state law, and these rules. A member shall not publish or distribute written material. The member knows or has reason to know that the material includes a false or clearly misleading statement. In addition, members, that rule is rule 56, rule 17.4, and we all could be reminded by this, says nobody other than the legislative photographer and the Capitol Press Corps who have credentials here can take pictures on this floor. And a picture of that board was posted on social media. Members, totally inaccurate, a lie. Now, I'm not going to file an ethics complaint, although for a period of time I thought maybe I should. But that kind of behavior is unacceptable. Now, members, this institution has only embodied 1,380 people. We have all been given a tremendous privilege by the people of Minnesota to be here. This institution is much larger than any of us. And doing things that dishonor this institution, that are not honest about our colleagues that we serve with, is very, very troubling. So I think of this institution as very distinguished. So I thought, gosh, I should look up what distinguished means. So I did. And it says, commanding great respect. That's how we come here. That's what this institution is about. And I think we all need to do a better job of making sure that we earn that. That was bestowed upon us when we came here because of all the people that sat in these chairs before we ever came here. But it's our job as members to continue and reinforce the great respect that has been put on us. And I think it would be a good thing for all of us, maybe between now and June 14th, to, to review in Masons chapter 12 and chapter 13. They're the chapters on conduct on the floor and on decorum. And let's all do a better job. And I've made mistakes too, Mr. Chairman. I've talked during a roll call or when to someone else's desk during a roll call. My friend Senator, Senator Abler rule, broke the rules today when he used a bill as a prop. Uh, they do that in, in the other body. We've all had our little uh, uh, forgivenesses, I think. But members, this is a serious, serious place. And I think the public for a long time, I don't know, Senator Thomas Onium, I, we get teased by our House members all the time about you senators and your wigs and robes. You know what, I wear that a little proudly, that even our House colleagues look at us a little differently than themselves. But it's not going to stay that way unless we honor the customs and traditions and the decorum and the rules that this institution lives by. So, members, we all can do better, and I just would encourage us to all think about the great honor that we have been given to be here. And it's kind of fun sometimes when you get your mail and you look at it and it says, Honorable Senator. Honorable Senator. Let's make sure 
that the public feels like we have earned that. And let's act like it, every single one of us in this chamber. So with that, Mr. President, uh, I yield the floor back to Senator Kiffmeyer. Um, back to discussion on the Conference Committee report on House File 1952, Senator Kiffmeyer. Thank you, Mr. President and members. So in regards to the State Government Policy Finance and Elections uh, Conference Committee report, there are four articles, but in particular to mention that this is not all of the eventual bill. This is a portion of it, mainly designed for same and similar, those things that were technical, uh, that are included here, uh, were signed by all of the conferees. So I'll just go over a few highlights at this time, though, so you know what you are voting for. In particular, the Office of the Legislative Auditor. There were several provisions that were voted on by the Legislative Audit Commission. Uh, those policy changes are in this bill, not the financial impacts. None of what is in this bill has a financial impact. Uh, the, other, the next one is the Capital Flag Program. This is, uh, again, a no cost, the ability to have a flag flown over, uh, uh, the U.S. flag and the Minnesota flag, uh, in honor of a service member who, uh, who has passed away. Another portion in this bill has to do with retired canines who have been in service. Uh, when they retire, uh, this piece of legislation allows them to be given over to their handler who assumes complete responsibility, and this is only for canines that are retired. Another portion is the Minnesota IT Department, and that will be uh, consistently renamed and also become a department, so a growing up of the Minnesota IT. The Blue Ribbon Council made several recommendations. They are included in this language. And also, the Blue Ribbon Council has been transferred into the Minnesota IT into a technology advisory role. There are also several provisions in here in regards to the Secretary of State technical bill. Uh, some of these provisions, uh, there's quite a number of them, uh, but I'll just go over a few of them. One of them is to rename the absentee ballots uh, to something that is more modern, more clear as to the purpose of them. So a signature envelope to a privacy envelope. Uh, these things will be better helping the uh, voters out there. Uh, military students will be able to use the UOCAVA uniformed and overseas voting process, as do our other military and overseas voters. Uh, one provision that I think is uh, good and is uh, new, though, is that four days before or after a holiday, there can be no special elections. So that avoids the Christmas, the New Year's, the Easter, four days before or after. That's a good policy. Something that the local units of government have wanted for a while seems minor to us. It's a big deal to them. So in the process of elections, any package of pre-printed ballots that is sealed and shrink-wrapped uh, if they are labeled with a certain number, they can take that number and do not have to open those sealed, uh, shrink-wrapped packages. Another area that we made some improvements is m monitoring the voting systems and their accuracy. Uh, previously, it was a percent. That always takes a measurement. In this case, we are naming specifically under 1,200 votes, only a two-vote discrepancy. Uh, would trigger a closer look. And it goes up in number of votes. The highest number of vote discrepancy in any precinct would be five. And then we also have an article on some campaign finance issues. Highlights there are that Hennepin County uh, will, on their local government reporting system, will now be transferred to the Campaign Finance Board, the State Board, instead of doing this only in Hennepin County. In addition, there are some security provisions for elected officials, those who report to the Campaign Finance Board, so they're going to be allowed to have some, use some unofficial or non-campaign expenditures for security needs with a limited amount of money over a two-year system. 
In addition, there will be for the Campaign Finance Board an alternate contact form, which means that this is information that only the board will use for official business. There was an additional item that was added because it needed a place and state government was the place where it would fit, and that is in regards to our veteran homes that are newly approved by the federal government. And in particular, um, what it includes here is an uh, allowance for all federal funds received in the fiscal years 21 through 23 to construct, equip, and furnish veteran homes in Preston, Montevideo, and Bemidji are appropriated to the Commissioner of Veterans Affairs to be spent in accordance with the requirements of the federal award. So this is really good news, members, for these three veteran homes uh, to release these funds for them. And Mr. Chair, that is the oh, highlights of the bill before you today, and I ask for your support for this conference committee report. Discussion on the Kiffmeyer motion to adopt the conference committee report on House File 1952. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed say no. Motion prevails. The secretary will give the bill its third reading. House file number 1952, a bill for an act relating to operation of state government. Third reading. Final discussion on the bill. Senator Rest. Thank you, um, Mr. President. I would like to um, endorse this bill, particularly the provisions that are included relating to the Office of the Legislative Auditor and to the Campa Campaign um, Finance Board. Um, these are very important ones in terms of the operations of those two agencies, and I appreciate the work that was done by the conference committee on that, um, including um, uh, obviously, Senator Kiffmeyer and Senator Carlson. Thank you very much. Further discussion on the conference committee report for House File 1952. Senator Kiffmeyer. Thank you, Mr. President and members. I just want to give a thank you to all the conferees from the Senate, Senator Lang, Senator Howe, Senator Coran, and Senator Carlson, uh, to my co Court in uh, the House as well, led by Representative Nelson, and also, most of all, to our staff. We couldn't do these things without their support. And so we have the Committee Administrator, Mr. Alec Bjorn. By the way, it's his 30th birthday today, if you want to give him a shout out later. And then we have the researcher, uh, Joey Wiley, the Committee Legislative Assistant, Christina Wilson, as well as nonpartisan, Mr. Andrew Erickson, Ms. Alexa Stangle, and also Ms. Stephanie James, and all the other staff in the revisor's office uh, that we depend greatly on and all of their support. And then again, Mr. President, I'll renew my request to ask for your yes vote on House File 1952 Conference Committee Report. Thank you. Members, we're on final passage of the Conference Committee Report for House File 1952. See no further discussion. The Secretary will take the roll. All members in alternate locations, please come to the chamber to vote.
call on Senator Frentz to report the votes of the members voting under Rule 40.7. Senator Frentz. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Champion votes aye. Champion votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Eaton votes aye. Eaton votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Eakin votes aye. Eakin votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Isaacson votes aye. Isaacson votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Latz votes aye. Latz votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Newton votes aye. Newton votes aye. Senator Frentz. And Senator Torres Ray votes aye. Torres Ray votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Coleman votes aye. Coleman votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Goggin votes aye. Goggin votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Newman votes aye. Newman votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Ingebrigtsen votes aye. Ingebrigtsen votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Housley votes aye. Housley votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Westrom votes aye. Westrom votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Osmick votes aye. Osmick votes aye. All members having voted who have the desire to vote, the Secretary will close the roll. There being 67 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to. <laughs> Remaining under motions and resolutions, we have some author's motions to be read by the Secretary. Senator Abler moves that the name of Senator Dibble be added as co-author to Senate file number 1357. Senator Wester moves that the names of Senators Drayheim and Coran be added as co-authors to Senate file number 2516. On the author's motions read by the Secretary, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed say no. Motion prevails. <laughs> Next we'll move to the 13th order of business, announcements of Senate interest. Without objection, the following Senators will be excused from today's session. Senator Benson from 1.30 to 1.40 p.m. and Senator Champion from 1.30 to 1.40 p.m. Announcements of Senate interest. Senator Bigham followed by Senator Kent. Senator Bigham. Thank you, Mr. President. Would Senator Gazelka yield? Senator Gazelka will yield. Senator Bigham. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so Senator Gazelka, I've been on the Transportation Conference Committee and I've um, enjoyed myself actually, very um, collegial uh, process and a lot of agreement. And I also have been following the judiciary because I'm the lead of civil law uh, very closely. Not so much process there. Um, I'm wondering now that targets have been agreed to by you and, and um, others, how do you envision the conference committee's um, work continuing? I know that as soon as we adjourn now, we're, all those conference committees evaporate, um, but I certainly hope their work does not. I mean, except for judiciary where nothing was done. But um, I'm wondering if, if these are turning into working groups after today, um, maybe some leadership and guidance on your thoughts on that process because transparency is key and um, I'm just very concerned about going into this unknown process that we aren't going to have transparency from stakeholders who have a lot of um, expertise, but most importantly, um, Minnesotans' voices. Uh, now that we haven't been able to get our job done and put a um, budget through, um, just wondering kind of if you could give some, some guidance on specifically just the conference committee work that has been done and how you see that moving in and if you've given any directions to your chairs on that. Senator Gazelka. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, Senator Begum and members. I'll, I'll just give some of what I was going to do uh, just to wrap up here and then I'll answer your, your questions within that. Uh, it, this was probably one of the more difficult years to try to come up with the targets, which we all know that if you don't have targets 
for each of the committees. You can't navigate uh, and merge in the House and Senate together. Targets always line up with what are you going to do for policies that cost money, and so that, that was the difficulty. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we had almost $3 billion of federal stimulus that came in with very little direction. Well, we got a lot of direction, I believe it was Monday, and even Friday we got more direction, and we're trying to close a deal using federal stimulus money into the, the budget area. So uh, as a result of that, what we did when we passed our, our budgets off the Senate floor and off the House floor is we've been having the committees meet, and they've been going through the side-by-sides and working through the the, the policies and the information, some uh, doing it a little bit different than others, but the material being covered. And I think that was important that we had that long committee process for all of the different committees. Uh, now as, as, as we finish regular session, we have to decide if we're going to move forward with working groups, which frankly then mean the groups would get together, but the chairs may get together. Uh, but keep in mind, we've had on these same budget bills the conference committee has been working for about 10 days, so we, that's, that's what we have to determine. Uh, both the House and, and the Senate have agreed that uh, May 28th is when we're expecting spreadsheets on each of the budget areas from the chairs of each of those committees, and then by June 4th, language that they can agree on. Part of the reason we're trying to work on that schedule, frankly, is so that we can get to the likely date that the governor was, would call us back if he wants to continue emergency powers of June 14th. So we, we're giving ample time, unlike last two years ago when we, we got the targets on Friday and we were supposed to get done by Monday, we just didn't have the time. And so that's going to be the process. I think each committee will work a little different depending on the dynamics of the chairs and how political or, or charged each different committee is. The Judiciary Committee is one of the more difficult ones because there are some pretty strongly held views. Of we are not going to do anything that we perceive as anti-police, but we are going to look at things that are police accountability that would make sense that everybody could come to the table and say that could make it better. And so th that is where I've seen some of the most uh, passion on both sides of that. So, but each area, health and human services, I've been told it could take as long as a week to run, run through all of that, doing it every day. Uh, we know, frankly, members, that a number of people have vacations right in these next few days, both the House and Senate, so we're trying to make room around that as well. But, so that's the, kind of the general process about where we're going. Uh, I'm grateful that we have targets, members. This, this was a really difficult piece to get. But once you get that, then you have to work on are there policy provisions that we can agree on? And then there's a lot of policy provisions that both sides are not going to agree on. And in the end, those, we're going to be throwing those overboard, getting the budgets done and the resources available for people. I'm particularly par uh, pride, pow prideful, whatever the, pleased, uh, Mr. President, that uh, we kept our promise that we would pass a budget that looks out for the needs of Minnesotans and we would do it without raising taxes. And in addition to that, there was a billion dollars of tax relief uh, to small business owners and people that needed those unemployment benefits and a host of other things. And so lots of good things, but we still have lots of work to do. Further announcements of Senate interest, Senator Pappas. Thank you, Mr. President. Would Senator Limmer yield, please? Senator Limmer will yield. Senator Pappas. Thank you, uh, Mr. President and Senator Limmer. Um, I see that today we've passed a number of conference committee reports by some of your colleague chairs. And as we all know, I serve on your committee. And uh, they passed things that were that had broad consensus. They were same or similars, or things that had a lot of stake, stakeholder support in those particular areas. And having served on your committee, I know that we also have those areas, especially in the area of criminal justice reform around sexual assault, that are similar to what the House has also proposed in their bill. So, Senator Limmer, I'm disappointed that we didn't also see from your committee, as we saw from some of the other committees, agriculture, health and human services, um, state, state government, um, bringing forth those provisions today. You know, we have several hours here before midnight. Um, there could have been more negotiations on those. Actually, I think they would have been rather similar 
And Senator Limmer, I've also been disappointed that your conference committee is one of them that that um, hasn't been actually meeting even every day and working very hard to resolve any issues. So could you please give me some assurance that you will, um, in good faith, continue to negotiate with the House on these areas? I know there's been a lot of focus on police accountability, and that's an important issue, but there's many other issues in the Judiciary Public Safety um, Committee that are, that are also important, and especially these areas around sexual assault and criminal justice reform. So I'd, repeat, I'd appreciate it if you could kind of reassure me that we're going to see some of these issues in the final product. Thank you. Senator Limmer. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Pappas. Um, let's see, where do I begin? Uh, I uh, had sent numerous messages to the other chairman uh, from the House uh, telling uh, Chair Mariani that uh, due to the fact that our bill was rather complex, uh, you mentioned a number of subject areas, uh, those complexities cost a lot of money. And due to the fact that it cost a lot of money, it was very difficult in order to come to any conclusion when we did not have budget targets, revised budget targets. And so as a result, uh, we talked about every issue in the bill, and nevertheless, we couldn't arrive at a certain decision without a target of money. And so knowing that any legislative process during this time in the legislative uh, session, one needs a deadline. One needs that tension of a deadline in order to come to a conclusion. And um, knowing that both sides are rather entrenched in the proposals that they respectively had, I knew that there was not going to be any decision made until we had uh, a solid budget deadline or a budget target. We now have those budget targets in front of us, and uh, Chair Mariani and I have had conversations. And uh, he ex he uh, sent me a text just this last weekend, which I agree with that uh, we're anxious to get together and put a bill together. Further, anno further announcements to Senate interest, Senator Kent. Senator McEwen. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just have a, a, a quick um, uh, clarification and apology that I wanted to make to my colleague, Senator Bach. Um, the clarification piece is, of course, that um, as first, right when we are oriented into our time here at the, at the Minnesota State Senate, we're told that we cannot take pictures on the Senate floor. And I just wanted to clarify that um, I did, um, and I often do, tweet votes that we take um, as a body. Um, but I always get those pictures um, taken as screenshots from um, our proceedings, which are broadcast on the Senate channel and on YouTube. So um, I, I, I seek them out and take a screenshot and then post them and then talk about them. Um, it was not a picture that was taken on the Senate floor. And I wanted to apologize for the the technical error that I made in, in my social media tweet to Senator Bach. Um, Senator Bach was um, correct in stating that I, I made a misstatement, and that is that Senator Bach wasn't the deciding vote for why the Equal Rights Amendment didn't proceed to the floor. He was just one of them, because we had a threshold of, of 41 rather than a simple majority. So I apologize for that technical error, and I'd be happy to make the correction on social media or um, in whichever way Senator Bach would like to talk about this later. Thank you. Further announcements of Senate interest. Senator Kent. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, it is sort of hard to believe we are here on the last day of regular session. It's, um, I think Senator Gazelka mentioned this has obviously been a challenging year for a lot of reasons, the whole year and then this particular session. Uh, and here we are on this beautiful May afternoon. It's not looking at the strike of midnight like we're used to, um, but here we are finishing up this session. Um, I do want to comment um, uh, on the comments first before I talk about this session and, and where we're moving towards and reflect on what uh, our colleague from Cook said, and I do believe we all do need to work harder on the decorum in this, in this body. Um, 
you know, we had a conversation earlier today about the way people are interrupting debate and how we define debate. And I believe that we are at our best when we are allowed to speak and make references and um, illuminate our points in a number of different ways. And uh, I think the, uh, the I can only best describe it as a gotcha nature of some of the objections that we keep hearing are certainly counter to what I've ever seen in my time in the Minnesota Senate. So before we reconvene again, I hope we can all think about how we can best function, how we can best engage with each other on this floor because our debate in this hall matters enormously. In thinking about this session, and where we are today and in looking ahead because we know we still have work to do. Um, I am really glad that we did get the budget targets announced today. Uh, it is obviously an encouraging sign, um, but I also know that, um, and I am disappointed that we have not made more progress and others have described that. We have seen some committees, I mean, I think the fact that the Health and Human Services committees were able to get, I think it was about 500 and some pages processed through and off our plate will make the process simpler when we have to come back and finish our budget. And I agree with um, my colleague from St. Paul that we should have done more of that. I think we had an opportunity to, and certainly some committees were able to adopt same and similars, others were not. And that's, that I, I wondered about that a few days ago, and, and, and here we are. Minnesotans want us to be focusing on their needs particularly in this moment when there are more needs than they usually have um, coming out of this pandemic. Uh, and I believe we are positioned to do well, but we could have done better by now. Um, the other thing that I wanna say is, uh, as we look forward, and Senator Bigham raised some of this, I really want to encourage uh, everyone involved, but particularly the leadership in the Senate and the House, uh, to make sure that we have a transparent process. Uh, you know, something we keep hearing is that partly because of COVID, partly because we have to do so many meetings remotely um, and so many of these discussions remotely, that Minnesotans and the media do not have access to see what's going on. And I do believe that as we come into wrapping up this business and, and, and putting together a budget for the next biennium that we can enact with confidence as serving the people of Minnesota, we will do that better if we actually do that in front of the people of Minnesota. Uh, so I, uh, it, you know, it is, it is never a good place to be reflecting on unfinished business, but that is where we are. I am one who's been saying for a while that I felt like the federal dollars were a significant wrinkle in our ability. I felt this is a significant, tr tremendously significant amount of money that we should not be throwing at a wall and trying to see if that's gonna work, that we needed to, uh, take the time to understand the federal guidance and for us to work together as a legislature and have say in that process. And so, uh, you know, there are elements of it that I think were a bit unavoidable, but I think we could have done better. And I hope that after we all have a chance to get a little break from each other potentially and uh, a little rest, even though we're probably a little better rested than we usually are at this stage of the end of a regular session, uh, that maybe we can reflect on how we can actually work together better. Minnesotans expect that of us, of us and they definitely deserve it. Thank you, Mr. President. Further announcements of Senate interest, Senator Gazelka. Thank you, Mr. President and members. Uh, Senator Kent, well said. I appreciate the comments that uh, Senator Kent made and Senator Bach. I think those are some things that you know I've been feeling as well. Um, I will say I made some comments. I be believe it was the last session about how we do things. I was greatly appreciative that uh, a member of the Senate came up and said, hey, that, you're right, we should be doing this different. We gotta work at it. Without a doubt, this is a tough place uh, to do the work that we do. The, the values and the things that we're trying to accomplish are sometimes different, not our love for Minnesota. I think I don't question anybody's desire to make Minnesota the best place it can be, but it's amazing how different that we can be sometimes. And as we put together these targets, I, I just wanna say that uh, uh, working with the speaker, uh, in particular, we talked to each other, not over each other, about really complex things, and then invited the governor in 
And I'm just glad we've got to the place we're at uh, with the differences that we have. And so I think what we're saying here is really, really important. This is a special place. Uh, this is my 11th year now, and just watching uh, uh, the things that we try to protect and keep, we've got to be careful that we don't lose them. And that's every one of us, first of all, doing it ourselves. And then if we see somebody else that's maybe missing the mark, uh, quietly pull them aside and say, hey, that's not how we do it in the Senate. You know, so as I look to where we're at now and what we're going to do, we're going to get this budget done. And it's got a good funding for a, a, all of the different areas that we look at. There's going to be little thorny issues that we got to work through, but we will figure that out. Uh, I'm grateful that we have some tax relief for, for some of the people I mentioned, but we're going to get through it. And so my goal is that we'd follow that guideline that we agreed to May 28th for those that are working on these, uh, these areas, get those spreadsheets done so we know where the money's going to be, and then June 4th we get the language done. And then we'll move forward and get it done. So we've got plenty of time, but don't waste the time. So members, I really appreciate the work that everyone has done here. And with that, Mr. President, I move that the Senate do now adjourn until Monday, January 31st, 2022, 12 noon. Senator Gazelka, do you mean March 31st? Just kidding. <laughs> uh, Senator Gazelka moves that the Senate do now adjourn until Monday, January 31st, 2022, at 12 noon. All those in favor, say aye. aye. Opposed, say no. The motion prevails. The Senate is adjourned.